Hello and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 22nd of July 2019 and the time has just gone 12.10 British summer time. And it's been a broadly positive start to European stock markets this week. This week. Uh, the FTSE 100 is outperforming. Uh, tensions in the Middle East in relation to um, the Iranian regime seizing uh, a UK tanker has driven up the energy market, the oil, oil, oil market has been pushed higher and that in turn has given a nice boost uh, to the likes of BP and Royal Dutch Shell and it is worth pointing out the FTSE 100 uh, as far as um, a European index is concerned has a relatively large amount, um, a relatively high constituents, constituents, constituents of oil and gas and energy uh, stocks so the FTSE is doing well on the back of that. Uh, the Eurozone equity markets are also a bit, a bit higher um, this morning uh, this afternoon rather um, later this week we have the European Central Bank um, and there, there is growing chatter and speculation that the European Central Bank might look to uh, this week either cut interest rates or even just use dovish language to set the tone and set the foundations for a possible rate cut in September uh, and obviously looking ahead on to, uh, uh, to the week after the next week the very end of July there's still speculation uh, doing, doing the rounds that the Federal Reserve are going to have some sort of uh, interest rate cut. You know, traders are on the side of whether it's going to be a 0.5% interest rate cut or perhaps it's going to be a, a 0.25% or a half percent cut. Either way, nonetheless, the, that, that speculation is, uh, is doing the rounds and it's given a nice boost to um, global stock markets. Uh, reporting season, particularly in the US, is getting very much underway. Uh, we've had a number of companies, particularly US banks, reporting last week. And this week, uh, we'll be heading a lot of big U.S. tech companies, which I'll talk about in one second now. So let's take a look quickly at the week ahead. And the week ahead can be found on our website, cbcmarkets.com. Under news and analysis, you'll find the bulk of the updates that we do will get posted to, the, to, the, um, to, to this section of our website. Uh, and the weekend article can be, can be found here. Uh, so tomorrow... It's quite likely that we'll, we will know the result of the Tory leadership race and, we'll, and in turn find out who the next Prime Minister of the UK is going to be. It's, it's looking like uh, Boris Johnson. Uh, tomorrow we have first half figures from Fibre 3. Uh, they are the uh, soft drinks uh, producer. Uh, on Wednesday, second quarter numbers from Tesla. Uh, we have French and German services and manufacturing PMI, PMI reports on Wednesday also. Manufacturing numbers from the US on Wednesday. Uh, on, we have second quarter figures from Facebook on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we also have first half figures from Metro Bank. Thursday, we have the European Central Bank million that I was talking about. Uh, on Thursday, we have second quarter figures from Amazon. And on Friday, we have second, second quarter GDP numbers from the US. Scrolling down here, taking a quick look um, at other major companies that are reporting during the week. Caterpillar of numbers, of, of numbers out, as do Ford. ITV of first half figures on Wednesday. On Thursday, we have 3M and we have Alphabet, the owner of Google. Uh, we have Intel as well. Uh, Unilever on Thursday as well here in the UK. And on Friday, we have McDonald's and uh, McDonald's and Rightmove, uh, as well as Twitter as well. So, so quite a number of corporate updates uh, to be focused on uh, later on this week. But like I say, you know what's been really moving the markets the last few weeks uh, has been the chatter about the Federal Reserve potentially cutting interest rates at the back end of this month, and it's also worth pointing out that you know the ECB might look to have a bit of a dovish move as well. So we take a look now at some of the major markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. So what I'm about, what I'm about to kind of say across the FTSE, the DAX, the S&P 500, and the Dow is all reasonably similar in that they've all had a terrific 29, 2019. Uh, Earlier this, this month, the, the FTSE hit a level up last seen in August last year, but we have drifted a small bit lower. But notice how we still managed to hold above this line here in around 7,470, which is kind of like the previous high and kind of all support in around here. And essentially, while we hold above that metric, it's likely that the wider upward trend um, could continue. I mean, you know, if you take out this region here, north of 7,600, we could be looking at it up towards this area here in a 7,794. And even if you do drop below this, given that we've had a, you know, a fairly solid upward trend uh, throughout 2019, we could see support come into play in around this area, this blue line here, the 50 moving average, 
uh, and that comes into play in around 7,390. It's only really if you have a, a size of break below this this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play at 7,351. It's only if you have a size of break below that, because then we get we get uh, begin to think you know we could be heading back down towards 7,200, or perhaps this red line here, the 200-day moving average, uh, 7,165. But notice how the put 100 is comfortably above its 50-day moving average, and I'll be referencing that in the DAX, in the S&P, and the Dow. So with the DAX, similar situation to the FTSE, it had a multi-month high in July. Granted, it has drifted a bit lower, but the wider upward trend of 2019 is still very much in play. We're sitting, we're sitting above the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 12,211. And essentially, while we hold above that metric, it's likely that the wider upward trend is going to continue. And if we press on higher from here, we could be looking entirely this this area. Uh, we, we test in that area at 12,460, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting uh, the recent highs at 12,660. And a move beyond that could take us back up toward this area here, a level last seen in last July last year at 12,887. And even if you do drop below the 50 moving average, support could be found from this area here in around the kind of psychologically important 12,000 mark. And, and not only is, is 12,000 a big psychological number, it also sort of coincides with the 100 moving average, this yellow line here, which comes into play uh, just north of 12,000. And you can see that that metric did manage to sort of act as support, um, just slightly below it, but they managed to hold above it on a daily basis in early June. Uh, we've not too long ago we had all-time highs on the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. So even before we open the chart, uh, I basically uh, really uh, it tells you kind of everything you need to know about sentiment in the in the major U.S. market. So all-time highs were achieved only last week. We can pull back ever so slightly. If you look at how, how much of a positive run we've had throughout 2019, um, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy. Granted, there has been occasions such as here. We've, where we've had size with pullbacks, but more recently the pullbacks haven't actually been uh, haven't been too deep. So, if the wider upper trend continues, and if we do kind of retest the recent highs in around 12,700, 12, sorry, apologies, 27,400 in around here, we could be looking up heading towards numbers like 27,500, 600, 700, so on and so forth. Because obviously, if we were to kind of print new all-time highs, we would be in uncharted territory. If it managed to drift a bit lower uh, from here, support can be found from this area here in around from say 12, sorry, 26,800 down toward this line here in around 26,658. We can see that there's a bit of consolidation in that region before, so it makes it more likely that we will see support come into play should we drift lower. And even if you drop below that, support can be found from this, this region here in around 26,400. And notice how the... Um, the 50 moving average, this blue line here, acted as support on a few occasions uh, in the middle of June. And if a metric has acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely it will do so in the future. But obviously, there are no guarantees. Taking a look at what's going on on the uh, or broader S&P 500. Similar situation to, th to the Dow Jones, a record was achieved last Monday. The wider upper trend is still very much intact. Uh, if you continue, to, if you look to kind of push on higher and retest uh, the, re the recent highs, you could be looking at targeting 3,000. Back beyond that could take us up towards 3,020, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking up towards 3,030, 3,040, and so on and so forth. If we do manage to drift lower from home, from here, support could be found from this area here in around. 2,952, or perhaps even from this region here in around 2,910, or even maybe down to 2,900 itself. Once again, notice how the S&P 500 is comfortably above its 50-day moving average, and the reason why I referenced it uh, on all the, uh, the major indices is because, according to Dow theory, the averages must confirm each other. So in this case, the indices must confirm each other, whereby if they're all comfortably above the respective 50-day moving averages, it makes it more likely that they will continue to remain above their respective 50-day moving averages. Obviously, there are no guarantees. It just makes it, makes it overall 
um, bullish move in those US and European mar equity markets more likely to, to continue. Take a look now what's going on in gold. So it's a bit of an unusual scenario whereby gold has often historically been a bit of a flight to, flight to quality play, uh, a risk off play. Uh, but because some of the move, some, some, because what's been kind of driving some of this equity market rally, particularly the US equity market rally, has been the perception that the Federal Reserve are going to cut rates. That's put some pressure on the US dollar. And in turn, that's also given gold a nice boost. So gold hit a level, fresh six year high only on Friday. So once again, you know, the trend is very much an upward trend. The sentiment is clearly very bullish. We have managed to be kind of seeing quite a bit of choppy trading uh, in the last few weeks, but the upward trend is still very much intact. And if you do manage to drift a bit lower, uh, in around the kind of 1410 or the kind of psychologically important 1400 mark might act as support. And even if you do drop below 1400, this region here in around 1380, 1382 might act as support. Uh, if you continue to press on higher from here, it's um, and you know create fresh multi-year highs. We could be targeting this region here in around 1485. And if you go uh, below, beyond rather. If you go beyond 1485, you can be looking at targeting the kind of psychology port in 1500. And then if you go beyond that, you can be looking up, heading towards 1600. Uh, I mentioned the volatility in the oil market at the beginning of the video. I'll take a quick look now what's going on in Brent. So even though we've had a fairly broad positive boost throughout 2019 in the last few months uh go the oil market has been in a fairly has been broadly speaking been bearish moved lower in the last few months and notice how even though it was showing signs of positivity whereby we received the founder of a base in around here north of 60 bucks per barrel you had to be that we had one higher high we had a higher low another higher high but We've had a kind of a sharp move to the downside, and we can see that we managed to create a lower low here. So, while we remain south of this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average at 67 spot 86, it's likely we could see further pressure uh, on the on the on the uh, Brent market. And if we do manage to kind of press on below from here, we could be looking at retesting the lows of mid June in around 60 dollars and 30 cents. And if you but on the flip side. If you do manage to retake the re take out the recent highs, take out the one day moving average this area here, uh, we could be looking at heading up towards the highs of late May in around $70, seventy dollars, uh, seventy spot sixty three. And if you go beyond that, we could be get targeting this region here in around seventy three spot sixty. Similar picture on WTI, whereby for most of 2019 had quite a sizable rally, but then began uh, a fairly deep correction, um, you know, a series of lower lows and lower highs. We could see here a similar situation to Brent, whereby we had the higher high, we had a higher low, another higher high. So things were looking quite positive, but the market managed to drive lower. The lows of, uh, of, of mid July managed to take out the lows of early July. So Things are still looking uh, a bit negative uh, for for the oil market. If you can, if you look to, uh, if you can essentially can remain below this region here, the 100 moving average in around 59 spot 16. If you can hold below that, uh, it's likely that we could see further further losses we made on the oil market. Should you press on lower from here, we could make a retest in the kind of 54 area here and move below that. Could take us back down towards the kind of you know 51 or just under 51 down here. If though the wider upward trend has been in play, if you, the wider move of 2019, if that, can, if that uh, re emerges and we continue to press on higher from here, and if you take out the recent highs in around um, $60.84, you know, in this area here, we could be look, looking at retesting this area in around $64 itself, and beyond that, up back up towards 66 Taking a look now uh, at, a, at a couple of currency pairs, um, euro versus the US dollar. So the broader negative move in the euro versus the US dollar throughout 2019 is still very much in play. Granted, we did have a, have a brief period uh, at the end of at the end of June where the, uh, the euro got back above its 200 moving average, but we've been firmly been 
the load since, and we seem to have been finding a bit of a floor in around the kind of 112 area. We haven't made any moves or any kind of serious progress to the upside, but the 112 area does seem to be acting as a bit of a floor for now. And should we take, should, should we go below that floor, that read the 112 area, we could be looking at targeting this, this region here in at one spot 11.10, and a move below that could take us back down to the psychologically important 110 mark. If you do manage to press on higher, keep an eye out for the trending moving average, this red line here, in at one spot 13.14. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the kind of the 114 region. And in order to really to kind of shake off the negative trend of the last few months, or the last, say, well, about six, seven months, we really would need to be kind of taken out um, the highs of June before we could then become more confident that the wider downward trend is is uh, is uh, has, has been uh, taken out, has been um, negated. And then, and then, should that be the case, we're kind of retesting this area in at one spot, 14.48. Uh, and the euro versus, sorry, the British pound versus the US, the US dollar. We've seen a solid downward trend in recent months, a series of lower lows and lower highs. Um, we, fortunately, while we were going to hold below the kind of one spot 26 area, it's likely we could see further pressure of the uh, pound versus the US dollar. And should that, should we, even if we take off the recent lows here, we could be likely heading back down towards one, tw one spot 23.65. And even if we, uh, unless we actually take out 126, this area here, uh, we, we, the, the, the bearish overall bearish move is likely to continue. But should we go north of 126, we could be looking heading back up toward the kind of the 128 region, and then a move beyond that might take us back up towards the trend moving average. We can see on a few occasions that, like that's kind of support and resistance um, a few months ago, so it makes it more likely that the metric will do so in the future. That's all for me this week. If you have any comments to make in this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.